So hopefully by now you guys would have developed an understanding of the different legal structure that might exist for a business. And if you look at each of them closely, you will also realize that no type of legal structure, whether that's a sole trader, partnership, limited company, none of them will find themselves as of they would rather rarely find themselves as the sole operator in that industry. Now, any business that is the only producer of a product in an industry is called a monopoly. But that's a very rare occurrence. There's not many monopolies out there. Monopolies tend to be inefficient. So most businesses will find themselves in a competitive environment. And a business will always like to see how they're comparing against their competitors. The customers would want to know which of the two businesses are bigger. So different people will have different reasons for wanting to find out which two businesses, if compared uh, between them, who is the bigger of the two. Now, let's take an example. Okay, let's say I ask you to pick between these two very well-known companies, Facebook and Google. And if I asked you, who is the largest? You will come up with different reasons for choosing one over the other. You might say that Facebook has more registered users, so maybe Facebook's bigger. Some would say, oh, but Google is used by everyone, but nobody uses Facebook, so Google's bigger. Some might say, oh, I think Facebook has more offices around the world, so they are bigger. Someone might say, oh, but Google has bigger, uh, more number of softwares, more programs, more products to sell, so maybe Google's bigger. So when it comes to generalizing between uh, you know two similar businesses and trying to figure out which one is larger of the two it's a very difficult answer okay, it's difficult to find one point of reference for it and the way to solve that problem is to first ask yourself who wants to know we'll get to the measures the ways through which we calculate different sizes of different businesses but even before getting to the method of measuring the size of business, we first need to understand who is it that asking? Who wants to know which of the two or which of the many businesses that you're comparing is the largest among them? And that is the starting point of all measurements of size. Who wants to know? Now, when we talk about who wants to know, the word that keeps coming up, and this is a concept that will constantly be seen across our syllabus, stakeholders. Okay. Stakeholders is anyone who is affected by any decision that a business takes or any action, any business activity that is undertaken. If it has an impact on anyone, anyone linked to the business, we call them stakeholders. So, for example, if a company decides to add more products to its portfolio, we know the customers will be uh, affected by it. They will like that part about it. And of course, that will encourage them to buy more products. So customers would be a stakeholder to the business. Managers of a business because they are given budgets by the company, by the owners. So they're interested in knowing how the company is doing. The government wants to know which company is bigger or smaller to decide whom to support and who to take taxes from. So different businesses will have different reasons for knowing the size of business or for calculating the size of business. And of course, the government will look at it for reasons of taxation. Of course, the bigger the business is, the more tax the government is able to collect from them. So that's what they want to figure out, who is the biggest to be able to charge an appropriate amount of tax to their activities. Similarly, they would also like to know which are the smaller businesses because the smaller businesses require subsidies, support in the form of financial grants, uh, especially dedicated to small and medium enterprises and those businesses that are beneficial to the overall economy. The government would like to support those companies. And knowing the smaller the business is, the more support they'll know, the government will try to figure out which are those businesses to support them, to give them financial advice, uh, technical advice, any other support that they might need. The customers are another important stakeholder. And of course, they'd like to know which is the bigger business because a bigger business would mean perhaps more branches. And also, maybe that means more variety. And that's something that is craved by all customers. The managers of a business would want to compare the size of different businesses so that they can figure out who is their top competition. Okay. Like Pepsi would like to know how Coke is doing and likewise for Coke on Pepsi. So they're always comparing their size with one another to see which one has the 
uh, head start or the lead over the other one and to simply compare their relative performances so without before even getting to using the measures of size of business which one to use you first need to ask yourself who wants to know because different people different stakeholders will have different reasons for asking the same question who is the bigger business and now we will look at the different methods that are used to measure the size of a business Now the first and the easiest way to measure the size of two businesses is simply by comparing the labor force of the two businesses. Okay, number of employees, just look at two businesses, let's say if one business has 200 employees, the other one has 250 employees, and from that you can infer that the more the number of employees is, perhaps the larger their output is going to be, the more innovative that company is going to be, the more uh, investment the company's made, uh, into developing their labor force in terms of training and expertise. So it's often the go-to method for anyone looking to compare the size of two businesses. A, because it's the simplest, and B, you simply have to count. And it gives you, you know, you when you count, it gives you an exact figure, it gives you a quantitative value to compare which of the two would be the larger business. Now, one problem that comes with that method is that some companies may have fewer number of employees but may be producing a larger output and catering to more number of customers as opposed to other businesses which have more employees but their output may be very low. For example, a business may be making specialist equipment for car manufacturing. There are not too many car manufacturers out there so anyone who's making equipment for car manufacturing would have a lot of employees but not a lot of output. As opposed to look at any IT or edtech or fintech company where you'll see that there's a small number of people relatively, but they're catering to a large number of customers. So that's something to look out for when you're using the method of number of employees. The second method is simply looking at the amount of sales that the two companies have made. Okay, Sales, if you remember from our earlier classes, the, pr the formula for sales and I will also point out here that sales or turnover or revenue is the same thing. Okay. Sales is simply price times quantity. Okay. And you can simply compare any two companies. Let's say there's one company that sells a pen for $10 and that sold 10 of those. So company A has a total of $100 in sales. Company B, perhaps selling 15, uh, uh, price at 15, and let's say they have managed to just sell five. That gives me $75. This proves to me that company A is the larger of the two because they have more income coming in. So a simple comparison, apple to apple, to see how the revenue of the two business compare, and whichever would have the larger number would be considered the bigger of the two businesses. Now the third method that could be used to measure the size of businesses is market share comparison. Okay? And market share is a simple comparison which figure which helps a business to figure out how they are competing against everyone else in the same industry selling the same product. Okay? Now whenever you hear the term market share, the best thing to do is to think of a pie chart. Okay? Let's say this is my company XYZ and this is everyone else, the blue part. Okay. Now, if let's say the whole industry sales was 100 units, whatever we are selling, let's say total everybody sold was 100. And I know I had, let's say 25% of that. Now I know that if 25% is my share of the entire market, then 100 units times 25% will give me my share of the entire sales which is 25 units. So market share simply helps to determine how much you sold as compared to everyone else. Now what, uh, what I could have done more is perhaps divided this into two or three different companies. So another company A, company B, company C, and simply see according to their percentages, let's say this was 33%, okay? This was 70%, this was another 25%. 
I can simply multi multiply it to the total industry units, which was 100, and figure out how each of the company fared against its competition. And when I look at it, I can clearly see that it's company A, which has the most sales out of everyone, 33% of 100, 33 units. So they have the edge, so they would be considered the largest of these businesses, okay? That is market share. And a simple formula for market share is your own sales divided by the total industry sales times 100. So 25% was after I sold 25 units out of 100, I realized that I have 25% of the entire market share. The fourth method of measuring the size of different businesses is by simply comparing the amount of investment the business has made. Okay, investment comes in the form of capital that the company is able to raise. And in the long term, we know that a company will be able to raise capital either through taking loans from banks or selling shares to the investors. Both of these are different ways of bringing more finance and more money to invest into the business. So the higher this proportion is, the between two businesses, the one with the higher portion will indicate that this company has a larger capacity to invest, which means when they invest, they have more resources, more resources will eventually lead to more sales, more output, better image, things like that. So it just shows the ability of a company to grow and expand quickly by having the most amount of capital available to it. So again, whichever company has the most amount of capital could be considered the bigger in that comparison. Now the last of the commonly used methods to measure size of a business is called market capitalization. Okay? And the first thing to remember about market capitalization or simply called market cap is that it is only applic applicable to public limited companies. Okay, public limited companies have the ability to sell shares on the stock exchange and those shares are subject to fluctuation in price. And a simple multiplication of any share's current share price with the number of shares issued by the company would give you your market cap. Okay, that's the formula, current share price times number of issued shares. Okay, now let me explain this to a simple example here. Let's take these two companies, ABC Limited and XYZ Limited. Both of the companies issued 10,000 shares. Okay, let's look at scenario number one where ABC is trading at $10 a share and XYZ is trading at $15 a share. When I calculate the market cap for both these companies at scenario one, okay, my ABC is 10,000 multiplied by 10. So 100,000 is the total value of the issued shares market cap for ABC and for XYZ, that is 10,000 shares multiplied by 15, dollars In simple comparison head to head, we can clearly see that it's company A, sorry, company B, which has a higher market cap, and we will consider that one to be the bigger company here. Okay, now that was only true for market cap situation price one. And we've just discussed that market and the share prices can fluctuate, can go up and down in a matter of minutes, hours. So if something like that happens and the share prices change from scenario one to scenario two, and when we look at that, I'm just gonna calculate that here, market cap. Number two, ABC this time around, they still have 10,000 shares but the share price has gone up to 13, which gives them a market cap of $130,000. Compare that to XYZ, they still have their 10,000, but now their share prices have really dropped. Perhaps uh, they had a bad quarter, some of their top talent left the company, which has had an impact on their performance, which has dropped their market cap to 90,000. And we can clearly see now that the scenario has reversed. Initially, where ABC, uh, XYZ had the lead, this time around, ABC has a higher market cap. 
So a simple fluctuation in share price could lead to a change in the order. So you, whenever you use market cap to use uh, to compare the size of businesses, you have to use it at the most current share price. Anything that's historic has of no use. You just have to figure out who gets larger at that point. And therefore it cannot be definitive because each time there'll be a different share price. They go up and go down. It's a very volatile market. And you must keep an eye on that before determining the size of a business using market cap as a measure. Now in conclusion, I will add here that yes, the five measures that we've seen are commonly used. They're universal. You can be applied from uh, car manufacturing to phone manufacturing to farming. They are applicable in all businesses and industries. However, there is no way to choose one best way to measure the size of a business. There is no one best way. It always depends on the industry you're working in. So for example, if you're looking at hotels, the number of rooms would be a cue as to which business is bigger or smaller. Or if you're looking at um, retail stores, the amount of space that they have, the more, the bigger the place is, the probably the bigger that business is. So you have to look at the industry which you are investigating before determining which measure is best to use. And the best way to go about this is to use a few. Don't just use one, use three or four and see across the board which company comes out on top and that would ultimately be considered as the larger of the businesses. Okay, just remember that as part of evaluation of your answers, you must present an argument as to how you decide. But there is no way to decide any one measure. It's always a multitude of measures which will give you an answer.